Don't be a victim of the crossroad, no. Victim of the crossroad. The speakers we have on uh, the stage right now are experts in terms of their related field. We know Kashyap Bhai, who has uh, who's been conducting a lot of courses and in, has been dealing with a lot of people in terms of their problems and issues. He's been running a lot of organization. So all uh, sorts of background, of, uh, youth and elders, all related, have been able to approach him and be able to show their concern. Raja Bhai has been teaching in a, a university and be able to uh, communicate with a lot of students. Uh, we have uh, Sheikh Abdul Wahab, who's from Canada, so he will be able to give you insight about the uh, challenges the youth are basically going through in Canada. And Brother Rukman from UAE, so um, on my right is the international panel, and on my left is basically the local panel. So Brother Mohira is basically also teaching in UAE and deals with a lot of youngsters. So if you have any concern, be ready with your uh, questions. Just uh, throw them at us, and inshallah, we'll try to cater them as much as possible. Before I uh, carry on, I would like Rajabhai to basically put some light on it and what we're basically trying to acquire from this panel discussion. Bismillah rahman rahim Jazakumullah uh, khairan, Brother Waji, for inviting us to the stage to have a discussion on this subject. Uh, I think what we're trying to achieve, inshallah, is that any of the of the queries or the concerns that you have, Jobi Aap Long Kikui Sawalat hai, uh Kui questions hai with regards to um, today's times and how to deal with the fitna that we are living in. Jin Jin times me hum rare, us may bosari difficulties or challenges hai, jin kom face karte. So how to deal with those challenges in today's times? Uh, and how to make Islam practical in the 21st century. That's what we're trying to get at. So if you have any concerns from this point of view, se related, you can ask and inshallah we can carry on the discussion from that point on uh, that how we can actually facilitate this process. Jazakallah uh, khair, Raja Bhai. I'll start off with Sheikh uh, uh, Abdul Wahab and ask him about how is uh, the, the scene in uh, Canada and how the youth are basic what challenges bas uh, the youth are basically going through so and uh, what queries they basically uh, come up with in terms of asking the caller, uh, scholars and the as youngsters they're basically going through in school etc so Sheikh Wahab would you like to uh, like put some light on it before I even start talking about uh, Canadian youth what I, what I would like to say is that in my brief interactions with people here in Pakistan and around the world, uh, alhamdulillah, I've been to multiple countries uh, over the past few years. What I've noticed is that in reality, the youth, the type of challenges that they're facing are not challenges specific to countries because we're living in an age where people are connected to information in the same way everywhere in the world. I mean, the same person that's living in Canada you know, with a cell phone that has access to all the different information and all the types of websites that may lead him to corruption and corrupt behavior, that's the, the same cell phone that you own over here. So Samsung doesn't change over there and it doesn't change over here. It's the same phone. And the type of ideologies that are being presented uh, at university levels and in different classes such as anthropology, such as, you know, other, uh, other arts classes and humanities, those are similar all around the world today, and that's the reality. Because what happens is, in much of the top universities around the world, the professors that are graduating, they are the ones that are graduating from normally Western universities. And hence, the type of information that they will be instilling within the youth over here, it's pretty much the same thing, because they picked it all up from wherever they studied, whether that was, you know, um, you can name the universities on your. The point over here is, that I think the challenges are pretty universal. And the so solutions are also very simple and very similar as well. It just takes you know, a lot of effort for us to combat because the, the money that is being placed into facade, it's incomparable to the type of money that is being placed into bringing reform and br the correctional process within Islam. There's hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, billions of dollars, and there's no exaggeration within that. In the entertainment industry that is being pumped on a daily basis to try to corrupt you know, uh, young people, someone came to me, and now of course I know this is a rough estimation, but they said that, uh, that in our school, and, and uh, you know, it appeared that he came from an Islamic background and so forth, 
we have a number of youth involved in pornography. Today, and I'll say it very clearly, one of the top countries in the world uh, in terms of consumption of pornography uh, from the Muslim countries happens to be Pakistan. This is a real problem. And the problem is there because we don't have the conversation or perhaps we don't necessarily uh, take all the means and the routes to correct uh, the problem. There is ways to correct, but we have to be willing to be faced by the problem first and foremost. So I think in reality, uh, instead of having the discussion on you know, the international, because I think he'll probably agree with me on that as well. Yeah, so it's pretty much, I think, same all across the world. The problems are the same. Y youth are dealing a lot with, uh, with this hypersexual culture that the television pr produces, right? So that's a problem that they're having and they don't have anyone want to talk to about this. Uh, the conversation can't happen with the parents because the parents shut the door of conversation. Conversation can't happen with the uh, you know other people uh, in society because they're going to look down upon upon them. So they've got this guy right over here, and they open it up, and then and then a lot of bad things happen. That's one thing. Uh, drugs is a problem as well all across the world, and and I think Pakistan is also no difference in that different in that regard. If I could say one thing in terms of a solution, I'll say. When I was working um, in Edmonton for a very brief time as an educational director for an Islamic center, a lot of the parents would bring me their problems and so forth. And one day, one person walked in to the office and they said, I have a question. I said, what's your question? And this sister was perhaps in her 50s or 60s, a mother, concerned mother. Um, and she was crying, weeping into tears. And I said, what's your problem? I gave her a seat and we started talking. And she said to me that I want my son to be like you. Now, first of all, that's something really wrong to think because you don't know how I really am. <laughs> I look really good over here perhaps, who knows, but uh, it might not be the same behind the cameras. But the point is that this is what she thought. So she said, I want your, my son to be like you. I said, uh, why is that? And then she gave her a few reasonings that she had. So. She said that, how do you raise your own kids? Alhamdulillah, I'm a father. So I said, uh, you know, that's a very good question because my kids are at an age where I don't know how to protect them. I don't really need to protect them from a lot of fitna. I don't really need to protect them from uh, a lot of trials. But I'm sure they're going to get to an age where I have to be concerned about that as well. So I said, give me a couple of days and come back to me. I will talk to you inshaAllah ta'ala when you get back. So when she came back to me, by that time I'd spoken to my mother. I told her I'm going to speak to my mom because I'm not the one that raised myself, right? So I have to go back to the person who raised me. And she said that, you know, as you were growing up, I thought that there was people trying to basically take you from any direction, all the evils all around you. And I realized that I'm helpless. You're going to be going to school. I can't take you out of there. You're going to be going out with your friends. I can't stop you from that. Even if I can't, you know, I can't physically overpower you, right? So, the only solution that I had was to turn to Allah Rabbul Izzati wa Jalal. So she said that that really is the most powerful, you know, weapon that you have uh, in order to protect your children. So a concerned parent, especially a concerned father, and also a concerned mother, would be constantly making dua to Allah Rabbul Izzati wa Jalal. Dua, don't underestimate dua, wallahi don't do it. Do not underestimate the power of dua. A man told me in, uh, in England, this person had cancer. And he said, I got cured for cancer, cutting the story short. And after I got cured from cancer, there was one thing that was left. I still could not taste anything anymore. Really? You couldn't taste it? He said, I couldn't taste it. The doctor said, you've lost your taste buds. That's one thing that's not going to come back to you. You can speak now. Everything is better in that regard, but you cannot speak, you cannot taste any longer. So he said, Sheikh Abdul Wahab, I cannot tell you how difficult it was for me to bear that I'm eating, but I can't taste the food that I'm eating. In fact, I started losing weight because there was no reason for me to eat anymore, right? He said, I went to the Kaaba, I went to the Haram, and I, I stood by the Haram, by the Kaaba. And I made dua to Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. And I said, Oh Allah, I 
wish that you return my taste buds back to me. Knowing full well that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who responds the call of the caller when he's really in need. He said, Wallahi, within one hour, I went to the restaurant and I could taste again. This is Wallahi, the power of dua. And the dua is definitely mustajab for the one who is going through difficult times. And, and there's many, many different ways to uh, get your dua answered as well. I have a book that I have translated from Imam al called, um, it's, a, it's a monograph, small book about how to have your dua accepted. Uh, perhaps that will be released later this year, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, since you've been involved in a lot of conferences and all these uh, public talks, so uh, up till now, what challenges are you and what are the basic concerns from the parents or the youngsters when they approach you? What kind of questions do they come up with? So can you just like a little uh, elaborate on it a little bit? Thank you very much, uh, Baji. The most question from the teenagers is that how do we tell our parents that we have to get married now? जैसे शेख अब्दुल वाल साहब ने बताया कि जो हाइपर सेक्सुअल सोसाइटी के अंदर हम रह रहे हैं और जिस फितना की सोसाइटी में हम रह रहे हैं तो उसमें जो सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट चीज है पेरेंट्स के लिए वो ये कि जैसे ही उनके बच्चे इस्काबिल हो जाएं कि उनकी शादी कर दी जाए तो दे शुड गेट द मैरिड नंबर 1 और नंबर 2 ये कि जो टीनएजर्स के लिए मैं समझता हूं कि जो सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट चीज है वो है कंपेनियनशिप वो है कंपेनियनशिप यू शुड हैव गुड फ्रेंड्स اور نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی بے شبار حدیث ہیں اس کے اوپر قرآن کی صورت الفرقان میں آیات ہیں اس کے اوپر کہ قیامت والے نے ایک دوست دوست سے کہے گا کہ یا ویلتا یا لیتنی لمت تخص فلانا خلیلہ کہ کاش کاش میں اس کو اپنا دوست نہیں بناتا کیونکہ اس کی وجہ سے میں جہنم میں چلا گیا تو you are known by your company you are definitely influenced by your company تو always watch out who is your friend اور اچھی کمپنی کو فالو کریں اچھی کمپنی کوشش کریں اور ایک اور چیز یہ کہ ابھی تھوڑی دیر پہلے جب میں پس آیا تو مجھے ایک صاحب نے فون کیا ان کا کچھ فیملی ایشو چل رہا تھا تو میں نے ان سے یہ کہا کہ آپ کا کوئی بھی ایشو ہے زندگی کا فوراں سب سے پہلے اپنی والدہ کے پاس جائیں اور ان سے کہیں دعا کریں میرے لئے تو ہم میں جو شادی کرنا چاہتے ہیں وہ بھی اپنی ماں کے پاس جائیں ان کی خدمت کریں اور ہر صورت میں کریں کیونکہ میں ابھی دو دن پہلے دبائی میں تھا تو وہاں پہ ایک انٹرپرنور کانفرنس میں تو وہاں ایک صاحب نے بتایا کہ میں پاتھ سال پہلے دبائی آیا میرے پاس کچھ نہیں تھا اور مجھے سمجھ نہیں آرہا تھا مجھے کیا کرنا ہے اور میں نے ابو دھابی میں صفحہ سٹریٹ کے اوپر کچھرہ اٹھانا شروع کیا اور within one month میں نے اپنا فلیٹ برج الخلیفہ میں لے لیا تھا اور پھر انہوں نے کہا کہ میرے ماں باپ مجھ سے بہت خوش رہتے ہیں اور میں ان کی بہت خدمت کرتا ہوں جب میں اپنی ماں سے کہتا تو میری ماں دعا مجھے دیتی کہ بیٹا اللہ ایسا کرے کہ جس مٹی کو تم ہاتھ لگا وہ سونا بن جائے اور وہ سونا بن جاتی تھی تو ہمارے لئے سب سے امپورٹن چیز ہے ایسا پیرنٹ کے اپنے بچوں کو اس فتنے سے بچائیں اور جیسے ہی اس ایج کو پہنچیں ان کی شادی کر دیں چھوڑ دیں کہ وہ کیا کریں گے انشاءاللہ وہ ک بس تھوڑی عقل ہونی چاہیے ان کو اور ان کو یہ awareness ہونی چاہیے کہ family کو کیسے manage کرنا ہے نمبر ون نمبر ٹو جو teen ages ہیں وہ اپنی company کو watch out کریں who is your friend اور اپنی ماں اپنے ماں باپ کی parents کی خدمت کریں ان سے دعائیں لیں آپ کے سارے مسئلہ ہو جائیں گے شادی بھی ہو جائے گی انشاءاللہ you have a question I have a question سر جس طرح آپ جس طرح آپ نے کہا کہ ہم اپنے ماں باپ کو کہیں کہ ہمیں شادی کرنی ہے بس سر ماں باپ یہ چاہتے ہیں کہ میری مرضی کے مطابق ہو اب لڑکا لڑکی یہ چاہتا ہے کہ کیونکہ یہ لائف کا فیصلہ ہے لائف کا فیصلہ ماں باپ کی مرضی کے مطابق نہیں ہو سکتا کیونکہ لائف آپ کو اس کے ساتھ گزارنی ہے تو میرا پرسنل جو ایکسپیرینس لائے رہا ہے کہ دنیا کی ساری ڈگریہ کرنا بہت آسان ہے مگر شادی کرنا بہت مشکل ہے کیونکہ آپ کو اب مثال کے طور پر شادی کرنی ہے آپ کو اپنی لائف پارٹنر چوز کرنی ہے جب تک آپ اس کو سمجھیں گے نہیں یا اس کو یا والدین اس کو نہ سمجھیں تو یہ کوئی ایسا کوئی ایسا سلوشن ہو جس میں ہم یہ مطلب میں کہیں اب مثال کے دور پر now I am a CEO of company but still I am not married ماشاءاللہ آپ لوگ سمجھ رہے ہیں کیا چاہ رہے ہیں یہاں پہ میں ایک بات کہنا چاہوں گا کہ جنوں کی شادی ہوگی ان سے پوچھا کیا وہ سمجھ گئے ہیں اچھا جی اس میں جو انٹرسٹنگ بات ہے کہ آپ یہ ایک ایسی سائنس ہے کہ آپ چار بھی کر لیں تو بھی نہیں آپ پوری کر سکتے ماسٹرز نہیں ملے گا آپ کو اس میں پہلی بات دوسری بات یہ ہے کہ جس طرح آپ کہہ رہے ہیں کہ والدین نہیں سمجھ سکتے تو ہم بھی نہیں سمجھ سکتے کیونکہ میں نے جیسے سائنس ہے اور کنٹینیوز ریسرچ ہو رہی ہے اور نئی نئی تھیوریز آ رہی ہیں 
तो इसका अच्छा हल ये है जो एक्सपर्ट्स बताते हैं हमारे एक दोस्त ने किया अभी एक बहुत ही ज़बरदस्त किस्म का कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव एक क्वेश्चनर बनाए चाहे आपकी अरेंज मैरिज हो लव मैरिज हो रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ दैट उसमें आप अपने जो स्पाउस हैं यानी स्पाउस टू बी उनके व्यूज़ लें और डिफरेंट एरियाज ऑफ लाइफ योर प्रायरिटीज देयर प्रायरिटीज दे व्यू ऑन दिस थिंग योर व्यू ऑन दिस थिंग उसको देखते हुए फैसला करें क्योंकि इंसान का जो मूड है मिजाज है ये बड़ी जल्दी बदल भी जाता है ये लव मैरिज जो हैं वो भी फेल हो जाती हैं अरेंज मैरिज भी सक्सेसफुल हो जाती हैं वो भी फेल हो जाती हैं मैं चार अभी चार महीने चार महीने एक ही पे बात हो रही है मैं आपको इसी एग्जांपल देता हूँ वो बहुत और चली नहीं, जाएगी नहीं, बात कहीं और नहीं जाएगी बिकॉज मैं बिल्कुल शॉर्ट करूंगा कि देखें चार बाकी कर सकते हैं मगर जो आप पहली चूज करोगे ना वो वो होगी आपके पास पैसा नहीं है बंगला नहीं है मकान नहीं है आप उसको चाह रहे होगे वो आपको चाह रही होगी मतलब मेरा कहने का उसको सॉरी आखिरी मतलब जो आप मतलब मेरा कहने का मतलब ये है कि आप जो चूज करोगे मीन्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल वो ऐसी हो कि आप उनको मतलब लाइक करें वो आपको लाइक करें उसके लिए पैसा मकान ये शर्त नहीं है हंड्रेड एंड वन परसेंट आई एम विद यू ठीक है आपका अखलाक अच्छी चीज है अखलाक में आपका एटीट्यूड अच्छी चीज़ है दीनदारी आपकी लव इन केयर नहीं दीनदारी खाली नहीं दीनदारी के अंदर भी अगर नबी करीम सल्लम की सुन्नत को देखें तो रसोल वो था मोस्ट रोमांटिक पर्सन अलकुम शेख आई क्वेश्चन या सो आई एम अराउंड ट्वेंटी वन ईयर्स ओल्ड एंड आई वॉन्ट टू आस्ट दैट बेसिकली जैसे आपने कहा कि यूथ जो यहाँ पर आई हुई है वो कहीं ना कहीं अपने कोई ना कोई जैसे रिलीजियस एक्टिविटीज़ में इन्वॉल्व होते हैं एंड जो नहीं आई हैं देर बेसिकली द वंस हु वी नीड टू रीच आउट बट आई फील के देर लाइक थ्री कैटेगरीज एक तो वो इग्नोरेंट जो मतलब दे इन डिफरेंट राइट नाउ फिर एक वो जो अलहमद बहुत ज़्यादा गाइडेड है लाइक like जैसे यहाँ पर माशा जो वॉल्टियर्स हैं वोट से दे एक कैटेगरी वो है एंड देन फिर एक कैटेगरी हम लोगों की आती है जो हम बीच में रह गए तो आई वुड से कि जैसे हम लोगों ने बहुत सारी सेंस किए हैं एंड फॉर एग्जांपल अगर कुछ के लिए रिपेंट कर लिया एंड उसको छोड़ भी दिया लेकिन सम हाउ इट्स स्टिल पिंच अस इन द हार्ट एंड उस पर फिर ये लगता है कि पता नहीं गुना बख्शे गए नहीं गए क्या हिसाब किताब है सो वॉट टू डू अबाउट द सेंस दैट वी ऑलरेडी आस फिवनेस फॉर एंड हम नहीं कंटिन्यू करते बट स्टिल वो खटकते हैं सो वॉट टू डू अबाउट दैम बिस्मिल्लाम आई वु लाइक टू से अबाउट forgiveness is that allah is more forgiving than you can imagine name any sin name any sin that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't forgive let me give you an example allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah ali imran wal ladina idha fa'alu fahishatan aw zalamu anfusahum dhakarullah and those والذين and those إذا فعلوا فاحشة whenever they commit some kind of فحش act something related to zina or something in that category ظلموا أنفسهم transgressing against themselves the act of zina or the act of sin is actually a consumption of your own self it's just like I usually give the example of uh, a person uh, who is uh, dying out of hunger. So what he does is, instead of finding some means of uh, uh, fulfilling his need, he starts eating himself. Now temporarily, that person would be able to satisfy his stomach for some time, but naturally he's consuming himself. So when a person is actually doing something haram, in fact he's actually consuming himself, but he doesn't know. He thinks that I fulfilled my need. For example, a person has the urge of drinking or doing drugs. Now he has done the drugs. He thinks that I'm satisfied. No. in fact he kill he ate himself allah say zalamu anfusahum dhakarullah when he transgresses against himself dhakarullah immediately he remember remembers allah fastaghfiru li dhunub fastaghfiru li dhunubi wa man yaghfiru dhunuba illa allah and then allah says wa man yaghfir who is there he asks allah for the forgiveness and then says wa man yaghfiru dhunuba illa allah who is there to forgive his sin He's never consistent on the sin. So my sister, actually, whenever there is a sin, whenever you commit any sin, or it's out of mistake, no problem, how many times you've done it, thousands times, hundred times, doesn't matter. As long as you're re- repenting, as long as you're feeling humiliation in your heart that you have done something wrong, Wallahi lazim, you don't need to fear Allah. But let me tell you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might give you more love 
because of your repentance than the person who's not doing it. This is a possibility. There are many evidences, but because I have to bound myself to the time, so Adam Indi Wallahu Ta'ala Alam Bisawa. Okay, there's one question uh, which I would forward it to uh, Brother uh, Rajas here, uh, and which is the most one of the most common question that you start practicing Islam at a very early age, but your family is not able to understand that. Uh, they kind of have a problem digesting the fact that at an early age you start practicing the deen and you start you know having an inclination towards religious aspects. You start studying the deen. So uh, usually, how uh, to convince your family? Uh, to be able to un make them understand that, okay, fine, these are the priorities that I have. And usually a lot of youngsters are going through this and you know they approach us, uh, talking uh, to us about this, because their families are unable to understand this. So uh, as far as the experience uh, and the interaction that Brother Raja Zia has had with the youngsters, what advice do you usually give them? And uh, what kind of uh, you know solutions are basically given from your side to them? Uh, just like a little bit earlier, Kashif Bhai had also that والدین کی خدمت کا جیسے ابھی کاشف بھائی نے بھی ذکر کیا تھا تو اصل میں بات یہ کہ there is nothing that speaks louder than your actions so آپ کے عمل کے اندر نا آپ اگر آپ اپنے آپ کو after being religious you are showing your parents and your family کہ الحمدللہ you have become better individuals عام طور پہ کیا ہوتا ہے کہ ہمارے نوجوان جو ہیں وہ دین پڑھنے کے بعد اپنے فیملی کے ساتھ اور اگریسیو ہو جاتے ہیں حالانکہ قرآن میں حکم ہے وَوِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ اِحْسَانَ اور قرآن میں حکم ہے کہ اپنے والدین کے ساتھ اف لیکن اف تو بہت دور کی بات ہے وہ تو چیخنا چلانا بھی چلتا ہے اور یہ بھی چلتا ہے کہ جی آپ کو پتہ نہیں ہے آپ کو معلوم نہیں ہے اور یہ نہیں ہے تو آپ کے پیرنٹس یہ کہنے پر مجبور ہوتے ہیں کہ اس سے تو وہ والا راجہ زیادہ بہتر تھا جو کہ اتنا پریکٹسنگ نہیں تھا وہ ہمیں پرانا بیٹا یاد آتا ہے جو کم از کم چیختا نہیں تھا جو کم از کم آرگیو نہیں کرتا تھا بیسے نہیں کرتا تھا تو ماں باپ کے ساتھ اپنا رویہ اپنے ایکشن سے بتائیں کہ مزید تقوی پیدا ہو چکے اور جسے آپ زیادہ کانشس ہو گئے ہو اپنے افیس کے بارے میں سو اس کو اگر آپ صحیح کر لیتے ہیں انشاءاللہ your parents themselves will say کہ بیٹا جتنا تم دین پڑھو نا ہمیں سب سے زیادہ فائدہ ہو رہا ہے اس کا so they will encourage you in your learning and understanding of دین بیدن اللہ تعالی this one question that I'd like all the panel speakers to put some light on it's from one of the audience that they've asked that I think it's a brother or a sister that they're 18 and it's been eight years that their parents have basically separated and they've basically gotten very much affected by it. And uh, they haven't been praying and it's killing them from uh, the inside and th the sisters are, are not basically having a good married life. So uh, they're just asking how to be patient, how to regain trust on Allah and how to come closer to Allah. Uh, this is basically uh, open for all of you guys. I think this is a very uh, serious question and needs uh, you know, first attention. So what advice would you give that individual? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. It's a very, very, uh, very, uh, subhanAllah, I cannot actually express my grief the way it does actually. Unfortunately, my own sister had this problem. And uh, you know what I would say to you? Whenever there is something related to your grief, something related to your heart, these are the matters of heart. The only cure that you have is Quran. Wallahi, if you can develop your relation with the Qur'an somehow, this is the only way that you can get out of it. Because I know my own sister, she had a divorce, and it's a very personal thing that I'm sharing right now. And uh, I was with my mother at that time, and I could see the way uh, things were proceeding. And Wallahi al-Azim, the ayat that were actually having, uh, that my uncle, who's mashallah a doctor and a scholar as well, she would send to my mother on uh, a WhatsApp message was of uh, Surah Al-Qasas in the beginning, when he would say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows your fear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the pain that you're going through. Because the mother of Musa alayhi salatu was salam, she had to leave her son in the water. And also, she would, he would also send her the ayat of Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, innama ashku bathi wa huzni ila Allah. This is the only thing that you can actually do and understand. And my mother, wallahi al-azim, whenever she would have this pain in her heart, she would always start with Surah Al-Qasas. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded her to just actually let the, uh, the Musa alayhi salatu was salam go, and he would bring him, uh, him back to her. This was the promise that Allah said. Only the reason is patience. 
That is very, very important, and patience is achieved only. Wallahi al azim a sabr can only be achieved through obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hadha ma'indi wallahu ta'ala alums. Bismillah alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Uh, the question is a, a disturbing question, wallahi, but it's a question that is not an uncommon question as well. It is really something that does happen within societies where the parents end up separating. And when that separation occurs, you'll find that, uh, that one party ends up filling the other party, the children, with hatred towards the other party. And perhaps... Uh, that occurs, perhaps that doesn't occur. But the occurrence of divorce is on a rise, and that's something that is no mystery to anyone who follows statistics in this particular regard. And children who are raised up in families which happen to be broken homes or broken families, many a times they do find themselves in a very, very tough psychological situation and state. And it, what doesn't help, and I'm going to address that for a second, because there could be other people that are going through this as well over here. What doesn't help is when one of the parents takes the fact that he has guardianship or she has guardianship over this child as an opportunity to destroy the image of the other parent, right? Because they've got a guilt within themselves. They've got guilt within themselves and they don't realize that if they are constantly filling their child up with evil feelings, it's going to tarnish the child's life psychologically because he will grow up hating who he should have been loving. He'll grow up or she will grow up hating a person that otherwise was supposed to be the one that gives them the hanan, the love, the shafaqa, the fatherly love and so on and so forth. All of that is lost and that's either the fault of the mother or the father, whoever was the one that was instilling the hatred. So Allahu A'lam, if this is the situation you're going through, my dear brother, my dear sister, but if you are, uh, what I say to you is that allow yourself to go through a fresh start. Meaning, if you've ever heard anything wrong about whichever parent it is that you heard about, cancel that out of your life for a second. Allow yourself and your feelings and your heart to be, you know, to be cleansed of any feelings, that ill feelings that you had towards either one of the parents, and then go for a new relationship with those parents, and inshaAllah ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you love. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Jaysay, Sheikh Abdul Wahab ne kaha ki ye question bhoat painful question to hai, lekin koi bhoat uncommon nahi hai. Exactly. Or jo brother Mughira ne kaha, Sheikh ne kaha, it's enough, alhamdulillah. But I just like to add one more thing. Everybody in this world is passing through a test. Nobody is free. Everybody in this world is passing through a test. Kisi ka koi test hai, kisi ka koi test hai. So Allah Ta'ala in the Quran has said, وَلَا نَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءِ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوِي وَنَقْصِ مِنَ الْأَوَّالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ خوشخبری اس کے لئے جو صبر کرے اور صبر کے لئے کیا کرے وَاسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ صبر کے ساتھ اور نماز کے ساتھ آپ اللہ کی مدد حاصل کریں اللہ کی مدد مانگیں تو یاد رکھیں کچھ بھی ہو رہا ہے ہر کسی کا ٹیسٹ ہے اور ہر ٹیسٹ پرابلم آپ کے ساتھ ہے اللہ کرے کسی کے ساتھ بھی نہ اور یہ پرابلم آپ کی دور ہو جائے تو اسے برادر مقینہ نے قرآن کا کہا شیخ عبدالوحاب صاحب نے کہا کہ اپنے دل سے جتنی یہ ال فیلنگز ہیں اپنے پیرنٹس کے بارے میں ان سب کو ریموف کر دیں تو اس کے ساتھ ساتھ یاد رکھیں کہ ایک مومن کے لیے دنیا ہی ٹرائل اور ہر ٹرائل کے بدلے ہمارے لیے عجر ہے انشاءاللہ تو اللہ تعالیٰ سے مجھے ایک شیخ کی دعا یاد آ رہی ہے کہ شیخ اور دعا یوں کی کہ وہ کافی بیمار تھے انہوں نے اللہ سے دعا کی یہ دعا کسی نے لکھی کہ شیخ صاحب نے یہ کہا کہ اے اللہ یہ بیماری بھی آپ کی نعمت ہے اور یہ صحت بھی آپ کی نعمت ہے میری آپ سے دعا یہ ہے کہ اس بیماری کی نعمت کو صحت کی نعمت سے بدل دیں تو اگر یہ ہماری آزمائش ہے تو یہ بھی ایک نعمت ہے قیامت والے دن ہم اللہ تعالیٰ سے کہیں گے اللہ تعالیٰ میں اور کیوں نہیں آزما لیا آپ نے تاکہ ہماری جتنی آزمائش اس قیامت کے دن کی ہیں یہ نہ ہوتی تو اللہ ہمیں اللہ تعالیٰ سے ہمیشہ دعا کرنی چاہے اللہ تعالیٰ ہمیں ہر تکلیف سے دور کر دیں لیکن جو کچھ بھی ہمارے ساتھ ہو رہا ہے اللہ تعالیٰ علیم سب کچھ جانتے ہیں اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ کلی شہین قدی ہر چیز پر قدرت رکھتے ہیں اللہ تعالیٰ الحکیم سب سے آدھا وزڈم اللہ کی اگر اللہ نے چاہا تو اللہ تعالیٰ نے یہ ہمارے لئے لکھا ہے تو اسی میں ہمارے لئے بہتری ہوگی انشاءاللہ 
اور توقع اللہ اللہ پہ توقل کریں اللہ سے دعائے اللہ تعالیٰ ہم سب کی ان پرابلمس کو ریزالو کر دیں اللہ تعالیٰ ہم سب کو اپنی آزمائشوں سے بچائیں آمین یا رب العالمین آمین